I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is March 29th, 2017, and in this video I'll be going over um, syslog, how to get it to listen for incoming logs on a port. Uh, if you don't already have syslog ng set up, I already did another video on how to basically get it set, set up on Ubuntu 16.04, and I'll try to stick up here on the uh, right hand side here, and you click on that little information, and there should be a link to that video. Um, also, I've also done this as a blog post, so there should be a link to the blog post there too. Uh, but with that, let's get started. So, I have syslog running on this guy. In fact, I can just show you. Well, let me do a few things. Let me do... Uh, da. Do not be released to show that I'm actually using Ubuntu 16.04 and show you that my uh, status syslog ng and just show that it is running right now. So the first thing we want to do is if we actually want to listen on a port, we have to go tweak our files. So I'm going to go here and uh, tweak my syslog files, syslog ng. So go to uh, etc. syslog ng syslog ng dot com and open that guy up. And the first thing I want to do is I need to add a source to actually listen on a port. So I'm going to do a new source. I'm going to call it network. You can call it whatever you want. That just is a variable that we'll refer to later on here. Um, and then we're going to come down here and listen on a port. So I'll do network transport. I'm going to listen on TCP. And I'll listen on port 601, which is the default, I believe, for uh, TCP. But I don't want to leave that I don't want to just let, let it use the default. I want to actually designate it myself. So now, um, if you're using source S network in this case, you you should be listening for incoming logs on port 601. And let me go down now and actually uh, make a new uh, logger that will actually reference that. So we'll do for a source. We'll use um, S network. Uh, for our filter, let's see, I'm going to make a new filter, F network. And for my destination, I'll make a new uh, destination, F, no, D network. Duh. There we go. And let's see if I did that all right. That should be right. Okay, so now I need to go set up a filter and a destination. We'll do the destination first, since that's probably really the easiest. Um, I'll, actually, I'll just copy and paste this one and just change it to network. And I'll go to var log and I'll go to app network. Okay, so now that's the destination. It should go to app var log app network. And then for a filter. What I'll do is I'll do F network, and what I want to do, I want to listen to a facility, and for this I'm listening to I'm going to listen to like a local application, so I'll do local zero, and, uh, and if you're not familiar, familiar with facilities, which I wasn't a week ago, I just recently had to go learn this. Uh, you can go watch my other video or go to my blog post, and it kind of goes over more what facilities are. Uh, but typically local zero, one, two, three, I think all the way to seven you would use for local applications that you are going to, when you send that log to this, you would designate this as a log from local zero kind of a thing. Um, so I want to do that and I want to not let, uh, not let level, yeah. see if I can type, there we go, boom. And so if it's, if a log comes in, it's a local zero type and it's, if its facility is local zero, which in my mind is kind of a type, and it doesn't, and its level of, of and its level is not debug, it'll come through. So if you're doing something for like log4j, info, critical, all those things should go through, but debug would not go through. Um, so that should work in theory. 
And so what we're going to need to do is you just do a uh, refresh. So sudo system control, sorry, reload, and syslog ng. So just reload that. Now the bad thing is when you reload, you're not going to get an error here if you've actually screwed up your configuration file, which I have done many a time. So there's a couple ways to get around that and figure out if you did screw up. So one way is you can go back and look at the status. And we can see that it did reload until it looks OK. Another way to do it is the internal errors for syslogng actually go by default. I mean, you can't always tweak it, I guess. Uh, go to bar log syslog. So I could have tailed that while I restarted it, although I have nothing really going on this particular server. And you can see that the configuration, reload request received, reloading configuration, that's a good thing. So that's okay. But let me actually go back on purpose and break it just to show you what it, what it does. So I'll just put some garbage stuff in here and then reload it and see no information. And if I go to status, um, Something information is running. Oh, sorry. If you're using reload, what it will do is it'll see if there's, it's not a restart. So if you're using reload, what it'll do is it'll actually try to look at the configuration files, make sure it's okay. And if they are okay, then it will reload it. But if it fails to, it will not um, kill the current running thing. So it's a kind of nice thing to use reload rather than restart in most of your systemd stuff or any kind of service. Uh, because if you're doing reload, you're not going to kill the server if there's an error in your configuration file. So, but see, now I can't tell because it's still running. But I, I could tell by the timestamp. So if I paid attention to the timestamp, I would see the timestamp is probably still the same as, you know, last time. What do I have? 1538. Maybe not. I have an But if I go look at the assist log, there I go. Error parsing. Just a little helpful note while you're doing this, if you're like me and you end up fat fingering and forget to put a colon in somewhere. There we go. Okay, now let me restart again. And we can see it reloaded. Okay, so we should be good. Hopefully I did the configuration correctly to list on a port. So now what we can do to make sure it's actually listening to a port, we can use netstat. So do netstat and do dash peanut. I like that. Peanut. It's kind of cool. And I'll do a grep syslog dash ng. And there we go. We can see that this one is actually listening on port 601. Now it's listening for anything. I didn't filter it. I don't even know if, I don't know how to. I just haven't bothered. Because uh, in my case, I got my network logged down. So locked down. Uh, and actually, in this case, I have a local application that's just talking to the port as a test, but um, you may want to tweak that further if you want to allow or disallow certain ports coming in. I'm not sure if syslog does it itself. It may. You would think it would. But I haven't done it. So, But anyway, this will at least get you a good start. So we're listening on port 601. And so now what we want to do is actually do a little quick, quick test to make sure it's actually getting in there. So what we'll do is we'll do, we can use a logger tool. So we'll do logger-p local0.info. So this will send a log message um, as a local0.info. And I can do this, but it's it's not going to, it'll send it to dev log, which will, which I set up before and it, will, it actually will log it, but it's not going to the port. So what we gotta do is we do server, 12700.1, which is a local host, and do TCP, and do port 601. Yeah. I'm going to do a little ugly, didn't I? Okay, there we go. So now that should send everything. So we'll hit that. And the first thing I'll do after I do that, I should, probably should have been doing this before, is I could have tailed, um, could have tailed syslog. Uh, 
Not that we want this to go to syslog, but this type of um, log will always go to syslog. So we know syslog should be set up correctly. And yep, there it is. So it, it actually, you can see this, the connection happened and the connection closed. I don't actually see the log, but that's the, yeah. And you can see the 601. So yeah, it's logging it, it's coming in, but it's not coming through. Okay. So let me, and go to app network. And we can see there's my message right there. So let me do something more complicated. Just to make sure it's getting in there. And there we go. So we proved it gotten in. So that's how you set it up to listen on a port. Um, pretty simple. And so next, I'm actually going to do this whole thing. I'm going to use the same thing, but I'm going to set up a simple Python application to send its logs um, to this port. Okay, now a simple Python program. So I'll just create a simple one. I'll just call it port log test pi. And I'm going to do some cut and paste in here and then go over what I've done. But it's pretty short. Maybe. Come on. There we go. Okay, so here we are importing the syslog and doing the log handlers and just doing a typical kind of logging system in Python. Um, I've set the level here to debug, so anything, it'll allow debug to go through, but once, if a debug message goes into my syslog ng, I filtered out, so I'm not doing debug, so those should be filtered out and not be passed on. Uh, and then here I have a syslog handler, and the address is localhost, and the port is 601. And the facility here is 16, which actually is a number indicating that it's local, um, local zero. And, uh, local one would be 17, uh, 18 would be local two, et cetera, et cetera. And then I put a little format in here and that should be it. So now this should send everything out there, but there is going to be an issue. You know, watch it explode. So now if I, uh, make it, execu make it executable. And so it runs, oh, I should be tailing this. Uh, there we go. So there we go. But now if I start doing this, um, I'm getting nothing. Uh, and it turns out, um, what's happening is Python with the libraries they have does not send on TCP. It sends on UDP. So I have to actually go change my um, syslog ng configuration file to listen on UDP. So what I can do that to do that is I can go back and edit my source I made. And I'm going to make a new oops, oops open it the right way. And I'm going to make a, I'm going to use the same source. I'm just going to add another thing to listen to. And I'll do transport UDP. And I'll listen on a different port because I just like to separate them to make, can you listen to the same port? I don't have to think about that. Uh, but just to make life easier, I'm going to use a different port. Uh, so there we go. And I need to reload it. Reload uh, syslog. Okay, so reloaded, and I can go make sure. Yep, that it was reloaded. And then let's do a quick check to make sure it's actually listening on port uh, 602 with UDP. So we can do the netstat and pnet, and then grab syslog ng. And there we go. We can see it's listening on 602, 
and you can see it's listening on UDP for that. So now I just have to go tweak my code to this non 602. And then I think we should be okay. Oh, I put that little annoying thing in my code. Oh, oh, wrong one. Sorry, I was doing this yesterday. How about the port? Now, hopefully, there we go. So there we go. We're getting my our messages through. Now, uh, it's filtering out the debug. So you can see, I'll run it again. You see I only get two. And you see that in my code, I am actually doing a debug. I'm just not letting it go through. Now, if I actually go through and, well, let me keep tailing that. If I leave that as is, and I actually go back and edit my configuration, and I look at my filter network, and I, oh, not that one. Get ahead of myself. So now if I uh, remove now if I uh, remove this, the and, ah. so now debug should be allowed to go through. Let me reload it. Do a quick check on that to make sure it did reload because I'm a little anxious on that. Okay, there we go. And now if I run it, the debug message should go through. And there you go, goes through. Um, okay, so that is cool. And oh, one last thing as a test. Since we are listed on UDP, I can do a logger. So if I go logger p local zero dot info again, server one two seven zero zero one. Now I can do UDP port 602 and oh there was an issue with this wasn't there I think uh, yes I think there's an issue so if I do something like that it oh it works and why did I do it that way okay I guess I did it in my other notes I do it this way I did that and then you can designate uh, RFC 3164. I wonder why I did that. Still works. A little, there's a, the older format, I think. I, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Why did I do that? Oh, I did that because I was doing... Okay, never mind. That's going to be another video. There's another thing where we can actually format messages, but I'm not doing I'm not doing that in this video. But anyway, so there you go. That's how you get it to syslog ng to listen to a port, and how you can test it by using the logger, and also just a quick little program using Python to send long messages to that port. Um, now you got to keep in mind this is not just sending files to that port; it's sending special formatted logs that syslog understands. You can't just you know start uh, pushing things there via T, uh, TCP uh, or curl or something that, like that. That's why I'm using this logger tool, which formats them correctly. So um, anyway, that's how you get it all working. So that is the end of this exciting video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.